stuck for an idea for the next adventure, what's actually just going to happen next in your game, here's how I fix it. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy and today we're looking at that thorny little issue of you got nothing. Your tank is dry. You have no idea what to do next and your party are in limbo. They're not giving you any hints, so what do you do? These are what I do. Now, what I'm going to do in the video today, I'm going to give you the idea, the, the theory, the stuff that I use, and then I'm going to put it into practice. What do we need to do? First thing, very first thing, is look at what do you have access to. So if you play with a battle map, or if you play with miniatures, or if you play online, um, look at what you have access to. That's important. So you look at all that kind of stuff and you go, okay, great. So I am playing a, oh, uh, let's do sci-fi. I'm playing a sci-fi game. I'm using miniatures around the table and I've got some miniatures, but some other miniatures I, I don't use. I just theater of the minded or I have a token or whatever. Fine, good. So that's the first thing. What do you have access to? Second thing, pick a color, any kind of color. It doesn't matter, just pick a color, random color. <laughs> chartreuse if you really want to it doesn't matter pick a color once you've got your color then what you're going to do is you're going to hit the books you're going to hit the books uh no no you're not you're going to go online you're going to go to google and you are going to type in myths and legends from pick a country any country I would suggest if you want to improve yourself, you want to add some general knowledge to that noggin of yours, why don't you go south of the equator for most of you watching this channel. Um, and if you are south of the equator already, stay south of the equator. We've all heard the Greek legends. We've all heard those kind of wonderful stories and things. Let's go looking elsewhere. Every single country's got its own myths and legends. Go have a look. Find a myth and legend. Then... Choose an emotion, choose an emotion you want your players to feel in this next adventure. So happiness, sadness, depression, anxiety, nervousness, fear, terror, horror, disgust. You choose. Again, random. Just randomly choose whatever you like. So now we've got all of these bits and bobs. And now... You take what you've chosen, you take the, the culture, the myth, the legend that you found, apply the emotion. Look for whom in that story is going to be having that emotion that you have chosen. Look around, because it might not be a victim, it might not be the monster, it might not be the creature, it might be someone adjacent to who has been affected, who has a grudge, who might want to release this monster or this thing into a village. Look for that. That's going to give you your starting point. And their, their emotional state is going to then become your theme for the entire adventure. So if it's, if it's um, terror, it will then run throughout the entire adventure as terror. And that's it, folks. That's all you need. Now you've got, you've got monsters, you've got NPCs, you've got motivation. Why are they doing this? You've got to, you've got to find that out. Uh, and then color. What, what are you doing with the color? What, why we, uh, the color is what you color the creature in or the traps or the, the, the setting. You're adding this color. And why are you adding this color? Because it's going to make this space feel your own. It's going to suddenly add this weird element that your brain, so wonderful that it is, your brain is going to go, oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, the color of um, green, for example, I've applied and this particular legend is set in a desert. Okay, cool. Well, what's green in a desert? Very little, except for vegetation and mirages, which uh, may look like vegetation or in an oasis. Ah, ah, so maybe this mission, this adventure happens around an oasis in the middle of a desert. And this is my story. This is the monsters. These are the things that I'm thinking of that could start to happen when the players arrive. There we go. So your adventure is created, you've gained a little bit of world knowledge, you've gained a little bit of insight into other cultures, and now you've got this thing ready to go. So let's put this into practice now. Let's actually apply this to our science fiction setting. So, all right. Um, so I've got a bunch of players there in my campaign. They're running through their adventure and they've got to a period where they're no longer being chased. They've arrived this little town, um, let's say this outpost on a planet, and they're at rest. They're kind of, okay, what's next is basically what they're saying. So I'm going to choose the color yellow. 
why not? I've chosen the color yellow. And um, right, so the legend I have chosen comes from Peru. I went and looked into Peruvian legends and I found the Tunche. If anyone is from Peru or knows about the Tunche uh, or the Tuncha, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. T-U-N-C-H-E, the Tunch, the Tunche, the, the, it doesn't matter. It's mine now. I have taken it. I have claimed it. Um, nonetheless, the Tunche, the idea is that a, a, a man or a woman who is so tormented and so evil becomes at the death a wraith, a spirit, which then drifts around and just before they attack, they make this loud sound, this loud whistling sound. I love that because already it's given my players something to be afraid of. As they are talking, all I'm going to do is the GM is occasionally go. And then someone dies. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Okay, so the Tunisia runs around and then they attack their victims and the victims then are... Uh, killed. However, people who cared for the victim, or at least people who know the victim, have to then spend a 24-hour vigil around the body to keep the body company. Because if they don't, the spirit gets consumed by the Tanshe, and the Tanshe then uh, can claim it as their own and do with it as they will, uh, grow stronger, grow more powerful, however you want to play it out. The, the, the legend isn't exactly clear on what happens with the spirit once it's been claimed by the Tanshe, but it is definitely claiming these things if there's no vigil for 24 hours. I love that. That again, look at that. We've got whistling. So there's this premeditation, this preemption of attack. Then we've got the body that has to be looked after for 24 hours. And I guarantee you, if my PCs go, um, well, we're just going to leave the body in the infirmary and the doctor can look after them for 24 hours. That doctor dead. That doctor ain't going to live. He's going to be deader than dead. I'm telling you right now, he dead. And the body will be added to the tunche, which will then grow stronger and more powerful. Okay, cool. Right. Uh, emotion. Emotion. I think the emotion here should be anticipation. I feel like the emotion of anticipation is really going to come home, hit home, and, and make this story even better. Because we've got that whistling. We've got the 24 hours. There's a clock that's going to be going down. We anticipate the end of the clock. I think that's going to work really, really well. So how then do I add it to what I have? I have a science fiction setting. I've got my players on a planet. They've got a starship. I think it's very straightforward. It is a standard kind of sci-fi trope with a little bit of an interesting twist, I feel, that a ship is now, it arrives in orbit. Like the Demeter from... Dracula. All right, the ship just arrives and there is a transponder beacon, but there's no response. So the people of the planet ask the PCs, please go up to the spaceship and see what's happening. We don't understand. They get on board the spaceship. There are no bodies. Where is everybody? And then suddenly all hell breaks loose. The Tanshe is a it could be an electrical being, it could be an alien of some kind uh, that lives in the electrical system of the ship. It pops out every now and again to feed on the on the electrical impulse or the energy of the, the players or the, the NPCs that have gone with the players. So now I know I need to add in some NPCs because that whistling needs to start killing off NPCs, uh, which then the P, you know they'll put them into the infirmary perhaps or just leave them on the ship while they go hunting the monster. And 24 hours later, the body has now dissolved uh, into a goo, perhaps. Let's say it's a goo, but the electrical energy has been absorbed by the tonsha and now it seems to be more powerful, can now do more things, which could possibly be to start to animate the starship. Uh, not like a transformer type of animation, but more a case of the starship now starts to align itself towards a specific direction, and that direction is an entire planet full of people. Then the color, what did I say? Yellow. Okay, so that's fine. So the goo that the people dissolve into is yellow. It's a yellow mucusy kind of substance. The tunche itself maybe has an electrical spark, which is yellow. Often we think of, you know, electricity as being blue and arcing and that sort of thing. 
It could also just be bright yellow, these sparks of yellow, or a haze, a yellow haze, perhaps. Yellow is also fear, the coward color uh, in some cultures. And so the NPCs that go with the player characters, maybe they are engineers and they're all wearing yellow uniforms so that they can be identified when they're killed by the Tunche and it's sort of yellow slime in a yellow uniform. So that gives me that kind of thing. And that's all I need to worry about. I don't have to plan the rest of my adventure. Remember, we are not plotting out, we're not working out this fantastic scenario in which the character... No, the Tunche is on the ship. The player characters are responsible for figuring out just how the hell they're going to get off of the ship, blow the ship up from orbit. Whatever they're going to do, that's their problem, not yours. Don't worry about it. You've set the ball rolling. The ball is now in their court. And that is how when I get stuck, I get to do a little bit of research, a little bit of reading, adding to that imagination of mine, and now I've got this wonderful, wonderful conversion of a Peruvian uh, legend, and there you go. So, that's it from me. What do you do? Find a legend and post it down below. If you are from the, wherever you're from, post one of the weird legends that you have, that you know about. Share it in the comments below. Then we don't even have to go looking on Wikipedia or wherever. We can just read the comments. That would be super, super amazing. A little one from my own home country where I was born, the Tokolosh. The Tokolosh is a little diminutive homunculus-like creature that is created by evil sorcerers and it gets sent into the houses of the victims. And unfortunately, the Tokolosh is only a few inches high but if it gets close enough to you, it can cut your throat. It can just be very savage, very nasty. Um, but if your bed is raised about six or seven inches above the ground, then it can't get to you. Apparently they can't climb. Anyway, those are mine. That's from South Africa. What are yours? Share them in the comments down below. That would be amazing and awesome. And until next time, I wish you all the most happiest of gaming.